that was doing a tour to Sri Lanka and obviously got picked for it. Obviously playing for England, obviously... It's a big accolade. Pride moment because you're playing a sport for your country. National, yeah. So uh, I spoke to my family, whatever. They was like, yeah, that's fine. Uh, we went to Sri Lanka and uh, I got uh, two Man of the Match awards in five games. Welcome to the next episode of Punchline Podcast. We're here at the Windmill HQ. Our new guest today is Raja Shah Zaib, a talented athlete with multiple skills. We're going to bounce in straight away. Thanks for having me today. Uh, contacted me last week and uh, I was buzzing to get here. Okay, so we're going to go into what your talents are first. So uh, I'm a cricketer. I play cricket. Uh, played from a young age. Uh, my father used to play cricket and I obviously used to go watch him. Uh, from there, really, I picked up and uh, I wanted to play a bit more competitive cricket than uh, just local and stuff like that. Um, so I play cricket at a club called West Bromwich Dartmouth Cricket Club. Is that a local club? Yeah, it's local. It's not too far Where from is it? here. It's in West Brom, right across Albion Football Ground. Um, the big ground. It's it's all right. It's uh, it's in the Birmingham Prem, so it's uh, it's a lovely ground. Nice people, great staff, and everything. Coaching and stuff like that are very good. Uh, so that's, that was only down the road from me. Uh, well, I first started, uh, I used to go to a cricket centre in Hockley. I just used to go train there and I used to play no games. Uh, it's called netting. So in the winter you'd go there and net because obviously in the winter you can't go outside. Uh, so from there, uh, the uncle that used to own that centre, he uh, signed me up for West Bromwich Dartmouth Cricket Club. I was about seven years old, eight years old. And plus it wasn't too far from my house. It was only up the road. Uh, so uh, I went there. Uh, played age group cricket and stuff like that there. Uh, and then uh, my school PE teacher uh, once said to me that, are you playing any county cricket or apart from club and stuff like that? And I was like, oh, not really. He goes, oh, would you be interested in playing county level cricket if we put you through in a trial? And I was buzzing. I was like, yeah, that's fine. So my parents didn't have a clue about it. So I done everything behind closed doors. I was about 14, 15 years old. Uh, so, uh, I took a trial, uh, with Warwickshire and, uh, I got selected. Uh, so I was playing age group cricket there for a few years, but before that, when I was about 10, 11 years old, uh, I trialed for Warwickshire before through the uncle that I used to go training with, uh, before I started for West Brom and, uh. So what's the place called where you trained, the netting place? I don't know what it's called. It never had no name. It was just like a, like a unit. It's like an academy or something. Or? It wasn't an academy. It was just like a big unit and it had two cricket nets in there. And uh, this uncle, what was he a coach? Or he was a qualified coach. Uh, he used to do that as a part-time. Someone recommended him to my dad for me to go there, just train there. Okay. Uh, see what he says and stuff like that. Cause we didn't really have the right links at that time. Uh, so obviously I went there, started, but with him, I went to a trial when I was about 10, 11 years old. And obviously didn't get selected because I was, I was a bit overweight and uh, I wasn't that fit and I wasn't probably good enough. The trial? Yeah. What, what do you do at a trial? To give you a letter, they invite you. So what happens is uh, someone has to nominate you. Yeah. Uh, it could be your teacher, coach, whatever. So someone nominates you. So for my example, my PE teacher in school, Mr. Dale, I haven't heard anything Shout about out him. to him. Mr. Dale, yeah. Mr. Dale, I haven't heard anything from him since, uh, since we finished school. Uh, lovely man supported me, helped me re like a lot. He was like a mentor for me. I think generally teachers back in the day were a bit more cool and a bit more... Yeah, 100%. Well, I can't say about nowadays because I'm not in school, but just from the, 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 the results and the reports we get from kids in the boxing club, yeah, we get told that some teachers are... Some some teachers are like, are like family. Uh, he was like family to me. Uh, he supported me. Like you can tell when someone likes you as a student. Genuinely. Yeah, yeah. and you respect them. Uh, he was supposed to be leaving uh, school when I was in year 10 but he said he was going to stay for our year he was nice like that so uh, he stayed an extra year for us and when we left secondary school after we got our GCSE results he left at the same time with us Okay. and uh, I, haven't really heard, I haven't really got much contact with him now but hopefully if he's watching this or if anyone knows Mr. Dale please uh, get in touch so uh, we get him on to interview yeah him. man of course why not so uh, going back to the topic about the trial, so you go to a trial, you have uh, three stages. First stage, there's multiple of people, uh, about 60, 70 kids. Uh, you'll trial, there'll be net lay, there'll be like nets at Edgebaston Cricket Ground. 
Is that like indoor center? Indoor the center. Back of the yes, yeah, yes, okay. in the indoor center. You'll have uh, each coach in each net with a notebook and a pad. Um, and a pen, sorry, and uh, he will note down the good things and the positives and the negatives. Uh, and then from there, they will see what you like. If they like you, you go through to the next stage. They'll send you a letter saying, oh, you're going to the next stage. So, you know, the first trial, yeah? yeah. When you have 60 people there. Yeah. Do they come from all over the country or? Can do. So mostly it's people from Birmingham. So around the Warwickshire area. Yeah, it could be Solihull, anywhere. Uh, Coventry and stuff like that. But some people trial from different cities to Birmingham so that they can... Uh, maybe play for Warwickshire or sometimes people from Birmingham will go to Leicester to try um, to like a different county yeah to a different county and stuff like that and what about the coaches that check you or are they from Birmingham or uh, they could be from anywhere they could be ex-cricketers they could be current professional players they could be ex-coaches like they have some sort of cricketing background so to who them. trialed you Which, was any famous cricketer or so uh, trialed me was uh, I had head groundsman at Warwickshire Steve Rouse okay he was my coach uh, he used to be the groundsman there he was my coach and uh, uh, Kadir Ali Moin Ali's brother okay uh, Moin Ali who plays for England right now uh, Kadir Ali he was my uh, Warwickshire coach Okay. He was also my first team captain at West Bromwich Dartmouth. And uh, now he's a really, really good friend of mine. We are very close. And, uh, you know, we just talk about the the things that we would like as he was a my coach and stuff like that. So the progress. <laughs> yeah. And he's a good mentor to me as well. And uh, he's helped me out quite a lot. Not even someone really, really close to you would help you as much as he has helped me. Uh, so he was obviously uh, trialing me at that point. He played many years for... Uh, uh, first class cricket different different counties and he also played England A cricket as well and he played cricket at the top level so having a mentor and a coach like him was was really good and you know learning from his experiences was uh, really fun so you know the trial going back to the trial you know you said there's three lanes what do they actually check in the three lanes is it like every lane is different or every same thing across three so lanes so it'll be the same thing because uh, there's a lot of people you're going to have to spread the kids out because it's dangerous do you bowl or bat? I, I do both. Both? Yeah, I'll bat in the middle order and I'll bowl. Whenever my captain tells me to bowl. What's your top score? In the middle order. Uh, top score is 107. And who did you make that against? Uh, Let's name and shame him. <laughs> I made that against uh, Kid Minister. No, sorry, 104 against Kid Minister uh, last year uh, in a club game, uh, which was... Uh, for, you know, for cricket fans, there's a, I know a little bit about cricket because I play like social level. But was that a chanceless inning or did they drop you a few times? <laughs> that was actually chanceless. Chanceless. Uh, yeah, chanceless. Uh, I was actually banging with my uh, with my very, very good friend, Shazir Ali. He also played uh, uh, cricket for England under-19s. He played uh, for Warwickshire and a bit for North Hans as well. So he was batting with me while I got my 100, which was a, which was a, a very, yeah, very supporting. Uh, he's supported me quite a lot with my cricketing and employment-wise with cricket coaching and stuff like that, which obviously we'll get onto later on. So it was a, it was it was a, it was a happy feeling because obviously Kadia, my coach, he was there, captaining me. And was it a big game or it was a it was a it, so Birmingham Prem is the highest club level of cricket you can play in Birmingham. So current professionals, ex professionals, ex international players, they all be playing in that league. So uh, it was actually a good uh, it was actually a big game for us because uh, we were just I wouldn't say struggling, but we were in the middle mid table. So we had to get some wins under our belt to. Uh, Slowly, slowly go up the table. But it was a, it was an innings to remember and uh, it was the first of many. Uh, you won the game, yeah? Yes, we won the game actually. Yeah. The worst thing is knocking 100 and losing the game. Uh, of course, of course. <laughs> but uh, getting 100 and winning the game, uh, it, was, it was a good feeling, man. So uh, talk us through the innings. So let's say you're out there now, first ball. Who did you face? How did you feel? How do you settle your nerves? So it works like this. So obviously uh, we were, I can't remember from the top of my head, but uh, da, 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 our score was... 50 for 3 or 60 for 3 uh, I come into bat uh, and uh, so you know we're talking about cricket 60 for 3 yeah. what, what's the format and what does that mean so we play 50 over cricket yeah. 10 overs per bowler yeah. so that's 5 bowlers can bowl uh, you have restrictions on uh, field placements and how many players can go out the inner circle so uh, if you watch it on TV that's a dotted circle that's yeah. close to so the so the dotted circle you see around the pitch is 30 yard circle Certain time in the uh, in the game, certain players are allowed out. Yeah. So, for example, uh, in the first ten overs, only two players are allowed. So, what do we call that? So that's called the first power play. Power play. Power yeah. play. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so at that point, that's the time for batsmen to cash Tee in. Off. Yeah, because yeah. 
two players out, less chance of getting caught and stuff like that. That's why they send the most attacking batsmen opening. Uh, and then after that, the field spreads out. And then it's more of a mental game, I reckon. Uh, because once everyone's, all the players are out and your team's struggling and you play one stupid shot or do something really silly, you could put not yourself in danger, but the team in danger as well, which you don't really want. But you have to get your head screwed on. And sometimes a lot of players get uh, chirp, meaning they will speak to you, try and distract you while you're batting. They call it sledging, yeah? Sledging, sledging. that's it. Uh, Australians are good at that. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching international match. Yeah. And a cricketer from England. Yeah. Played a shot on the bat broke. Yes, yes. Michael yeah. Carberry in yeah. Australia. It actually said the Kookaburra on the bat. Yes. And I think Kookaburra is an Australian brand. Yes, it is. And you heard, I think it was Adam Gilchrist behind the stumps and he said, that's not a Kookaburra. That's oh, a Grey Nix. Okay, okay. Because the Grey Nix is an England bat yes. and he's saying the, the quality right. is yeah, in that yeah. poor. <laughs> Australians love a, love a good chat and, they, and, they, and they're quite, quite good at it as well. Uh, they're quite good at what they do. Uh, but obviously, if, Get that's, under your skin. Yeah, if that's, that's the way that... Uh, they play, that's just the way, that's their nature. So you can't really stop them because uh, uh, it is allowed. It's part of the game. Yeah, uh, especially to a certain extent, you are allowed to uh, sledge. So when you walked out, what, 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 did anyone sledge you? To, I don't know why, but you know, uh, I get sledged quite a lot. I don't know why. It's, pff, I, don't, I don't really sledge anyone when I'm fielding. What, what did they say to you? <laughs> some stuff I can't say, but you know. Uh, you can say it in a sort of like friendly way. They, they, like I, when I first played... Um, in the first team squad quite some time back uh, I played and missed a few shots like in a row and I was only about 15 then and uh, 16 years old then, and uh, I didn't have much knowledge about you know players chirping and stuff like that because I never it's never it's happened a to new me before environment, yeah. and I had someone bowling to me and a grown man and uh, I've missed a few balls and he goes to me he swore and obviously he goes to me oh, what are you doing here you should be playing in your back garden this is not your uh, this is not where you should be playing so uh, after after this game, go back to your garden and don't come back on a cricket pitch again. Stuff like that, and you shouldn't really, you shouldn't really take it because wh whatever happens on the pitch happens on the pitch. But off the pitch, everyone's good friends. What did you say to him? Nothing. I, I couldn't say nothing to him. Are you scared? I didn't get scared, but I felt Intimidated. like I felt like what the hell? What, what am I doing here? Like yeah, if you don't want to be. And then on the opposite side, um, one of the seniors batter just said to me, "Just you know, relax and just bat and stuff like that." So. It was it was it was good, man. But uh, it's it's a good learning curve, you know. When the older lot kind of dig it into you, you start to learn and you get more mature about certain things. So uh, that, that that was all right, really. Did you smack him for four or six after that? To be honest, with you, I didn't really. Uh, I got out in the next over, I think, on about two or three runs. But but what it's what you learn from a game. Uh, you can't always perform. Uh, when you're not performing, you got to look back and think. You know what? What do I need to do right? What do I need to do wrong? But as years have gone on, I feel more comfortable playing in that environment now. So it's, it's, it's quite good. So let's go back to this 100, yeah? yeah? So you come out to the square and for those people who don't know what the square is, basically the, the nicely cut grass yes, area yes. within close proximity to the strip. The strip is what they actually bowl on, yeah? So you come out, talk us through it. Let's see, what bat do you use? Why? So uh, I've got a sponsor from Mars Cricket. Mars Cricket, yeah. yeah. They supply me with the... Uh, Bats, pads, uh, all my cricket equipment. And they're in the UK? They're in the UK. Okay. They are a very good company. Local? Uh, they are from London, I think. I think they're from London. Not too far. Yeah, not too far. So, uh, obviously, they supply me the stuff and whatnot. But obviously, I went out to bat and uh, I think we were about 60 for three or something like that. Off about 15, 16 over. So, I had some time to bat. So, I went into bat and uh, placed a few balls. Felt a bit comfortable. Uh, and then just carried on buying, buying, buying. On the other end, a few wickets got lost and uh, my good friend Shazir Ali, he come and we both were buying. The way to play yourself easy when you're buying, I personally think, is when you're having a good laugh, when you're having a good time in the middle. And especially when you're with someone that you're really close with, you don't realise that so much pressure gets off you because you both be talking to each other, you both be um, encouraging each other, you know, stuff like that. And then... Uh, we were just batting, 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 and I got to my 50, and then he was batting, he got to his 50, and obviously we were congratulating each other and stuff like that. And then we had about 10 hours left, and uh, I, was, I was really, really tired that game. The lads will laugh at this when they, uh, when they look back at this video, because uh, I was getting a lot of cramps, and they always call me, I'm on, they always tell me that I'm unfit and stuff like that. So I was getting really bad cramps, and I was hitting a shot, and I was pulling my leg out and stuff like that. So... I find it really hard that day for some I don't know why, but because I ain't batted for that long in, 
time. Normally I'm stamina, yeah. Normally I'm meeting them out straight away. So uh, I was batting for some time, and um, so we were just talking, talking, and then um, there was two balls left of the innings. Uh, I was on ninety four or ninety six. I was on ninety six. Sorry, I was on ninety six. Two balls left, and the opening ball was bowling the last over, and I uh, I just remember hitting the ball over his head for six. And as soon as the ball hit, I didn't even look at the board because I knew that that's just, that's gone. You middled it. Yeah. And then uh, I just thank God and that, you know, got my first hundred and stuff like that. And it was, it was a proud moment for me because uh, I had to uh, kind of put my name out there. Uh, and then after that, when I started playing different, different teams, they'd know that, you know what, this kid can play because he's got a Birmingham Prem 100. Yeah. So, uh, but like I was saying about the sledge and stuff before, like everyone is good friends off the pitch. Cricket is like you have your own little family. So I got people who know me from cricket and stuff like that. So everyone's got like good bonding with each other and stuff like that. So it's 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 really good. It's, I, I I enjoy playing the sport, uh, social wise, and obviously playing the sport as well. Yeah. So you know, um, I play cricket as well. I've yeah. never hit a hundred. <laughs> I made a few fifties, okay. but we play a lower level, like. But do, so, do you social play league. Sundays, Saturdays? I've played Parks League, I've played with okay. Harbone Cricket Club but in the okay. lower teams. Okay, okay. So I've just go for a day out really. Okay, okay. And recently, because I've lost a bit of fitness over the years, I've started to bowl spin. Okay. And I found out that... Quite good at it. I'm not very good at it, but people underestimate you okay, as okay. a spin bowler yes, and they try yes. to tee off. Yeah. And that's when they make mistakes. Yeah, it's true. And uh, that's when the fielders come into play and we've got a good fielding team and okay. we take a lot of catches and... Uh, it's, it's been quite good. Yeah. And then last year, I played in the LMS, the eight-man league. Last man standing. Last man yeah, standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a totally different format. That's uh, that's completely different to Saturday Club Cricket uh, because different ball. A lot of fun. Yeah. Last man standing, eight people. 20 overs, I'm sure, isn't it? Yeah, but it's five overs, ball overs. Five ball overs. AstroTurf. AstroTurf. Yeah, so the ball comes on nice. Uh, and you don't change ends. Don't change ends and you just smack it, really. Yeah, you just tee off, basically. That's it, and just tee if off. you run, you have to, if you're in a pair, you can run one. But if you're the last man, you have to run twos, yeah, 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 hit yeah. fours, or hit sixes. I actually played the first time last year. Uh, that was quite fun, actually, because uh, I used to, the only reason, see, the main cricket's on a Saturday. Uh, that's your day to play cricket. And Sunday, obviously, local leagues or parks leagues and stuff like that. But during the week, I would play just to get some practice in for the weekend. Just so that, you know, I got some, uh, some, I've been hitting some balls during the week and stuff like that. I've been bowling, fielding, catching. Because fielding and catching is like a big aspect in cricket. Because uh, if you can't catch a field, you won't be selected in the team. You lose games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like I played last man standing last year. And uh, it, it was quite fun. It was really fun because... Quick game. Yeah, quick game. You know, less fielders, whatever. I think it's more beneficial to, to the batsmen than the bowlers, I reckon. Only because there's less fielders on the pitch. Which is, uh, which is quite fun for a batter. Like I play midweek T20s and I find that it's good good kick up for the Sunday games that I yeah, play. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It's, really, it's like they say, the more practice you get, the more better you'll get. Uh, so in cricket context, the more balls you hit, the more you'll feel good when you're playing on a weekend and stuff like that. So it's, 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 No, it's quite practice, good. how often do you practice? So we've started to practice now uh, about two times, two, three times a week now with club cricket and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's quite good, man, because uh, sometimes people get quite... Uh, Sometimes, you know, if you don't train as a team, when it comes to the weekend to play cricket, you're not really bonding and stuff like that as much. But the more you're with each other and together, you're like a family, uh, like a sports family. And, you know, you got to look out for each other and stuff like that. So we're training about twice, two, three times a week. Uh, some people do their own thing apart from the days that we're meant to train as a team. General fitness. Or, yeah, general fitness. I know a lot of cricketers, they uh, play golf. Yeah. And apparently it helps the back muscles and back the swing. swing and, and stuff yeah. like that, your hips and stuff like that. So... Uh, and I suppose it's just a quiet place to get away in. It is. Uh, it's a similar, no, I wouldn't say a similar sport, but obviously you got a ball and you got a club in your hand, but uh, you're still swinging it. So it's good for hand-eye coordination and stuff like that and judgment and stuff. It's a good sport for my mental, uh, like for your head and stuff like that. So it's quite really good. So, you know, you say you play county level. So what, what's the highest level you played? The, I played indoor cricket actually for England under 22s. Uh, I was meant to go to Australia this uh, October uh, for the under 22 World Cup. So there would have been countries like obviously England, India, South Africa, Australia. And so the main countries that play cricket, uh, I was supposed to go to Australia. Uh, but because obviously, because uh, of the pandemic and stuff like that, we can't really go. So they're going to reschedule all that? They're or? rescheduling that. They've already, I think they've already rescheduled it for next year. So you're going to be working hard now too? Yeah, yeah. Is it going to be on stuff. TV? 
uh, that's gonna be live streamed online and stuff like yeah. that. So, so yeah, it'll be good to watch you. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So make uh, sure you win. Yeah, hopefully, man. Hopefully, that's the aim. That's okay. that's uh, what we're hoping for. But because you know, when I was in school, sometimes we had detentions. Yeah. And our math teacher was a cricket enthusiast, so when we had oh, detention, okay. he'd be like, right. What you're gonna do for hours is bowl, and I'm gonna bat. Oh, okay, and he used to be a tennis okay, ball okay. in the gym, the school gym, and we used to all bowl. Yeah. Okay, so about five, okay. six of us in detention. That's a so that's a good idea. For so if you don't win and do. you come back, we're gonna make you bowl twenty five <laughs> overs to us. Oh God, I've been knackered. It's all right. Make you a better bowler and make yeah, us better right. batsmen. Yeah. So uh, I went to uh, Sri Lanka in 2017. Uh, Was this the indoor? Or? Yeah, this is the okay. indoor, indoor indoor setup. So uh, talk us through indoor setup. What what is the indoor setup? So uh, it's uh, is it eleven aside or it's eight aside? Eight aside. Yeah, eight aside. Uh, you will have uh, do, 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 so you bat in pairs. Okay. Four overs per pair. Yeah. Uh, normal bowling and stuff. So the net would be the size of this hall here. Uh, the nets are quite tight. Yeah. So the, the ball bounces the ball around. Hits it, and the ball's quite hard as well. So. Uh, it's a very intense game. That game is. It's cricket, but it's, it's like indoor. a tip and run. Is it? It's not tip and run. You have to run it. If you have played two dot balls, dot balls meaning score no runs on them. The third one you're gonna have to run, and that's your opportunity to take a wicket or run out. Uh, in that game, fielding is really important. Uh, you have to be sharp. But it's a really intense game, really fun game, especially in the winter when there's no uh, idol cricket going on. It's really good. So I used to uh, one of my mates. Um, he sent me there obviously to play a game for someone, and I played, and I really enjoyed it, and. Uh, one of the coaches there really liked me and stuff like that and um, he told me to come down and play more often and I started to get better slowly slowly and uh, there was doing a tour to Sri Lanka and obviously I got picked for it uh, obviously playing for England obviously it's it's a big accolade proud moment because you're playing your sport for your country national yeah yeah so uh, I spoke to my family whatever they was like yeah that's fine uh, we went to Sri Lanka and uh, I got a uh, Two man of the match awards in five games. That's brilliant. Even though we lost the series, so uh, that was another proud moment. And uh, so, what what did you get the awards for? Like batting, bowling, uh, both. Okay, I got it for both. Yeah, uh, my contribution towards the game was good for both of the games. So I got two man of the matches, which was uh, really really good. And obviously now we was all looking forward to uh, the Australia World Cup. Would have been my first World Cup. Yeah, but you keep working at it, and hopefully we'll see you there winning the World Cup. Yeah, that's it, really, man. Everything happens for a reason, I believe. So. Uh, if not this year, maybe uh, 2021, hopefully. So you got other skills as well, obviously. So talk us through your, the, the, the new skill or the, the skill you're working at professionally. What I'm doing, obviously, I, uh, I coach kids cricket. Yeah. Uh, I work, uh, obviously, as a cricket coach. Uh, I'm also at university. I'm studying uh, sports. Uh, I'm in my final year now. And uh, what I do on the side is I'm a qualified massage therapist. Okay. Uh, sports massage therapist. Uh, so... Uh, what I do is, uh, obviously, I can't go now because of the pandemic and stuff like that. But uh, what I used to do was, uh, before the pandemic, uh, I used to be mobile. I used to go to people's houses and stuff like that. Provide massage in their own Is this the, mainly the cricket community? or uh, It could have been anyone, really. Uh, from social media, really. It's something I really enjoy doing. So uh, I thought make a profession out of it for part-time, really. It's quite good. And you're going to progress that and make your own sort of clinic? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to do is, obviously... Uh, get my own clinic and uh, you know make my own like, little setup going on and stuff like that hopefully yeah so but common injuries from cricket yeah obviously bowling Shoulders, you get a lot of wear and tear and back because when you're back. landing on, on the studs and some decks are really yeah, hard so yeah. what I'm talking about a deck here is you know the strip yes. depends on the groundsman and location yes some some strips are really hard. when you stomp in some especially the heavy guys yeah, like yeah, me yeah, yeah. we have a bit of back problem so what, what would you recommend uh, like Let's say I came to you for a treatment. What would I need doing to sort my back out so, or my shoulder? Uh, what would happen, obviously, you'd need, obviously, a deep tissue massage. Okay. Uh, it's quite painful. Uh, so uh, that really uh, loosens the muscle up for you. Um, I, I, if I was playing cricket and obviously I would have, a, like, just say, a uh, lower back problem, I'd get it done after a game. Uh, and then, obviously, you recover for a bit and then start training again. And then if it keeps on going bad, I'd keep getting treatments done. Yeah. every week and stuff like that so uh, to be honest with you sports massage is really good especially if you're quite active uh, physically in sports and stuff like that uh, even like if you're going gym or it doesn't need to be a sport it could be just like gymnastics or going to the gym or even if you're doing running and stuff like that it's really good for you mentally it's really good for you as well see I find like I work I work from home at the moment okay 
And even in the office sometimes, because I'm on the computer for most of the day, yeah. 37 hours a week, have a lot of strain on shoulders, neck. Yes. And sometimes that posture is bad for you as well. Exactly. And sometimes you need that. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have it done. And sometimes it's too late. And do so much damage that it's irreversible. Obviously, when, you, when you're in the office, you're always leaning forward and, you know, your back's arched and stuff like that. So for everything you do, you got to have a certain position where you do. Even when you're driving your car, you got to have your chair, uh, sorry, your car seat at a, a certain angle. Uh, like how far back you want it tilted and stuff like that. Everything makes a difference, but it won't affect you now. It'll affect you in the future when, when uh, hopefully if you live that long, when you're, when you're quite old. So uh, if, you, if you want to... Um, have a good, uh, not have any problems and stuff like that in the future when you're quite old, uh, then you're better off just doing little, little things properly starting from now. Like the littlest thing could be like stretching and stuff like that. Waking up in the morning, first thing, stretch. Before you go sleep, stretch. Stuff like that really. Little, little things will help you in the future. Okay. And you know, we're going to go back to the cricket again. So obviously you can see I like my food. So that's sort of part <laughs> on a bit of timber at the moment. But there's a tradition to have a tea halfway time so t tell us about the best and the worst teas that you've ever had and i'll tell you mine in a minute <laughs> that's that's my favorite part of uh of my saturday as well uh having teas um we'd go back into the change room have a uh, team talk uh captain would say go on then go and have uh, your teas if you're opening the bank uh you would obviously eat quite less so if you're opening the bowling you'd eat quite less because uh um, don't want any stomach problems. You don't, want, on you the don't pitch. have a stitch when you're running. But you know, some some lads don't tend to eat much because they're quite nervous if they're going into bat or if they're going into bowl. I used to be like that, but then I thought because you know after you're after you get out or after you bowl a few hours, you'd be starving on the pitch. And yeah, it's a long day, isn't it? It's Cricket. Meet up at the club for about ten o'clock and go home in the evening about eight nine o'clock. So it's, a, it's it's a very long day. So I tend to uh, go upstairs. I, the first thing I do is fill up the drinks. I love. So each player has one, one glass. I'd have two glasses next to me, squash or whatever it is. And they would just, just start eating my like pizzas and uh, you'd have sandwiches and pasta, lasagna, wedgies and stuff like that. So you'd, you'd have, you'd have decent, uh, decent food. Um, but the best one is on, on a Sunday because uh, it's, it's not quite that serious. Sunday league, a lot of Asians be playing and... Uh, their break time they bring like uh, rice and they bring like, like wedding food yeah like wedding food basically <laughs> and uh, so technically you get married every Sunday <laughs> exactly that's it <laughs> these teas sound really good compared to I'm, I'm in the wrong league because when I play cricket we normally get a cheese sandwich and that's it yeah so here and maybe a bit of squash yeah here you have a different kind of variety of sandwiches uh, you can have chicken sandwiches uh, tuna cheese and this tomorrow. Dartmouth yeah yeah this is Dartmouth okay so I need to fill in membership form for Dartmouth cricket yeah man calm down man uh <laughs> So uh, it's, it's quite good. Uh, but the main thing is uh, obviously on the day you're playing cricket, so you need to look after yourself and, you know, you can't eat too much. If you eat too much, you're not going to perform. Yeah. Being stitch. So I had an opportunity to do the lunch for the team once. Okay. And basically I had a caterer, a professional caterer. And like you said, they made rice, lamb biryani, kebabs, oh samosas, God. fresh salad with the <laughs> pomegranate in there. Okay. <laughs> um, little sides like crackers with cheese on there. Okay. It was quite pricey, but it was worth it because that particular day was a lovely day. And the team we played against, I think we played them continuously for about 10 years, friendly games. Okay. And it's a good bunch of guys, a few doctors in there, a few solicitors, professionals, a few just people like me just doing average jobs. And um, they just said that after the lunch, we didn't want to carry on playing cricket. We just wanted to sit there and relax. <laughs> what tends to happen is you, you, if you eat too much, you tend to get lazy. Uh, and if you get lazy, you're not going to perform. But since that day, I've had a lot of requests to do the tea more often, but <laughs> it's a lot to organise. Like, I mean, behind the scenes in cricket, there's a lot of support staff that do all this. I think most of them do it voluntarily. Yeah, some do voluntarily and some people actually do it as a professional as well. Yeah. Um, I know the groundsman's got to be a professional because that's it's a skill that, in itself. That's, that's I personally, that's a very hard job being a groundsman because you got to prepare a pitch how your captain would want you to prepare the pitch yeah. for the weekend depending on who you're playing against. So if we're playing against a team, just say next week, Saturday, and they're full of spinners, you wouldn't want to use an old old used pitch. You want to have a fresh pitch that if we got good seamers, good fast bowlers, that, that's going to benefit us. Um, stuff like that, really. Just little things make big differences in cricket. One, at one point, you could be 100 for none of 15 overs, and four overs later, you could be 100 for six. So, mm. any, so can collapse. Yeah, you can. Anything can happen in that game. The one ball changes a game. Yeah. One ball can change a game. So uh, you shouldn't really give up in that kind of sport like that.
okay, um, we talked about the, the lunches and the, the food <laughs> on the menu. And so um, now if somebody wants to join a cricket club, what, what's the process? Like, obviously with boxing, I can tell you the process. We've got a governing body called England Boxing. I'm assuming the England Cricket Board is ECB is the, the governing so body. So ECB is the main uh, governing body for obviously cricket uh, in uh, England. But uh, to join a cricket club, what you have to do is you'll have to contact the cricket club. Yeah. So how do I find a cricket club now? I want to join a club. and So what you do is uh, you'd go onto the Warrior Cricket Board website. Uh, they will have, uh, so it would say on there, find a club. You put, type in your local postcode and there's a lot of uh, cricket clubs will come up. Uh, and you can choose whichever one you want from there. From there you would contact the club, uh, speak to them, tell them how old you are. Just information really, what, what cricket you played, etc. If you've got a child or a daughter or a son that wants to play cricket, just give them some details. They'll uh, invite you to some training sessions or whatever and then you just leave it with the coaches and the coach will do the rest. Uh, put the kid or whoever wants to play club cricket uh, in, this, in a certain category or in a certain team that they would want them to play in and just leave the rest of the coaches. And obviously some people, obviously, they know they're not good at cricket yeah, and they know they're not going to make it in a team. Yeah. But I found that there's always clubs out there that have other opportunities like scoring, umpiring. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's, like we said earlier, someone to do the tees. Yeah. Or just help out with general upkeep. Like with the groundsman, they could do with someone who can cut the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And things like that. So, so there's obviously... So someone who uh, who's interested in cricket and knows that, you know, I can't play and stuff like that. There will still be opportunities for them to play. Yeah. They can still play like cricket's a sport. You don't... You, you can play at your level. So there's, it's not like no one's welcome. Everyone is welcome to play cricket. Um, if someone's not good, they will still get a chance to play. Uh, but talking about jobs in cricket, there's a lot of jobs you can do in cricket on a game day or even not on a game day. Uh, you don't need to play cricket to be a coach. You can become a coach. Uh, you can uh, become, uh, obviously, a scorer. Uh, if you've got knowledge about cricket and uh, you know you really enjoy you can become an umpire you can apply for umpires course you can uh, obviously do the tees if you want so there's there's different sex and uh, different um, categories and jobs towards cricket as well that you can do as well I think with local clubs what my experience is there's not a lot of people come to watch so I think we, encouragement should be that families friends if you've got nothing to do in a week just go down to the local cricket club and just help and just spending maybe five, six, seven quid in the, in the shop or the bar, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. That will help a club yeah. prosper as well. So uh, what we what we normally have in the Birmingham Premier is we have quite a lot of, uh, quite a decent amount of people coming down to watch. Okay. Uh, we have supporters that have been supporting us from years like... Members, like long-term yeah, members. like when I was a kid, I used to have people coming down and... and did they all wear them ties like with the club colours and Not really, and not really, but some of them would wear like club... Uh, uh, you, you, like club clothing and stuff like that because you know that. the math teacher I told you about yeah. earlier he had the Lords tie he was a member of Lords okay the MCC is probably a member yeah, of so that yeah so the yellow yeah, and yeah, red yeah, kind yeah. of stripes on, on the he tie he probably has like a season pass and stuff so like, like on there. parents evening or posh events whatever he'd wear that tie okay, and show everybody okay. look I'm a member okay. it's like a sense of belonging yeah, yeah. for him so obviously we'd have like uh, loyal fans that have been supporting us from day um, so uh We'd have a decent crowd, uh, especially home, uh, especially when uh, Albion are playing. Yeah. The whole of the cricket ground is just fully And packed. do you charge entry or just let no, them in? No, 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 no entry. They can just come in, park the car and come and watch. Uh, do they get free parking on match day? Or? I think they do. I think they do. Uh, what happens is obviously, because we've got a bar at a cricket club, um, that tends to be just fully packed. Like okay. literally packed. The whole, turn over a lot of money. The yeah. whole ground is just fully packed and it's good support because... We're West Brom and they're West Brom. West Brom. Also. You're better than them though, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so equipment wise, I've got I've got more bats than I've probably made runs. <laughs> yeah. And every time I get sold a bat, <laughs> I'm told it's the best English willow, okay, even yeah, grain, okay. straight grains, <laughs> good pickup, uh, double grip, etc. etc. But when you try and hit a four, it doesn't feel very good in your hands. See, there's different levels of bats. Uh, how do you pick a bat? So personally, how I'd pick a bat is, it depends uh, on, firstly, it depends on the weight. Uh, each batter has a, a, a specific uh, weight of a bat. And another thing that they, they look at is the grains on the bat. So apparently the more grains you have on the bat, the better bat it could be. But that's not always the case. Yeah, bats are quite expensive. Uh, cricket equipment's quite expensive. It's going to be expensive because you're going to need to uh, get the best one you can it's get. It's all handmade and yeah, so it's, it's a skill handmade. and a craft. Yeah, exactly. So uh, 
you just got to pick the bat how, what, uh, however it suits you and hopefully uh, it pings when, uh, when the ball hits the bat because that's the best feeling you get as a, as a cricketer when the ball hits the middle of the bat. The, the best bat I had was not an official bat uh, but it somehow had good grains on it. It was a, a Spartan similar to Chris Gale's bat. Oh, quite thick. Yeah, but it wasn't a, an official spot. It was a copy. It just had oh, the stickers okay, on. Okay, okay, but the okay. actual, for some reason... And the whole team used to use it. it used to get thrown around, abused, okay, and it just lasted okay. the test of time. Okay. And I hit plenty of boundaries. That I really enjoyed it. It wasn't too heavy. Okay. Um, and I don't know. And then I spent, recently I spent a lot of money on a GM cricket bat and it's absolutely awful. Like every time I play a good shot, it just shakes. See, that's the um, thing. Uh, it's your luck on a bat. Yeah, but um, the guy in the GM shop was like, this has been prepped on a machine <laughs> and it's ready to go and everything. And even then, I think I felt I need to knock it in a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's different. Uh, so... Uh, some people like the bat oil, some people don't like the bat oil. They normally press them now, yeah, don't they? Yeah. they spray so them with water and press them. And they or... push them into a machine and stuff yeah. like that. Um, they've even got like a knocking machine now, so yeah. just leave it in there for a couple of hours. But I think hours. majority of the international players now, they don't have bats knocked in, they have them pressed. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, what they find is when they knock them in, they become too dense. Yes, yes. And they like to have a soft bat. Exactly, And yeah. it doesn't matter if it's got a shorter life because they've got sponsors exactly. and they get like 10, 12 bats in exactly. one, one sponsorship deal. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, they're kitted out of a life, really. The bat is uh, really the main thing in, in The cricket. main tool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, another thing, obviously, your helmet and... Helmet your is uh, like uh, vital. What they have now is uh, at the back of the helmet, just at the back now, they've got uh, a little protection um, because obviously if the ball hits you there, then there's... It's, it's, it's obviously uh, really dangerous, but a helmet is really important. You should get the best helmet you can get, the most protected one, because uh, if uh, the ball does hit your uh, <laughs> your face, uh, it's not going to be uh, very pleasing if you ain't got a good helmet on. So obviously, helmets are must, isn't it, now in cricket? Yeah, it's a must. Some people still don't wear them, but uh, obviously if a spinner comes on... But you can still you, get a top edge. You can get a top edge yeah. when you're playing a sweep or anything. It's dangerous. I normally... Uh, Keep my helmet on and at some fielders times. are a bit wild with the throws as yes, well. So if yes, you're running yes. between stumps, hundred percent. Someone launches one in 100%. and it hits you in the back of the head. Yeah, yeah. You'd rather have a helmet on. It's uh, a, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's not an easy sport as people think it is. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of protection, a lot of safeguarding stuff that's got to go towards it as well. So I'm gonna ask uh, you to give us one final, sort of like one sentence wrap up advice to a young budding cricketer who's who thinks he can't make it, but he's got the, all the skills. Just uh, keep working hard. Um, you can be your time anytime. Uh, you never ever give up. Uh, keep going. Even if you're feeling down, negative, think of a positive about it. Uh, train hard. Uh, I personally think you'd rather train, go train than uh, go out and chill with your friends. Uh, stay off the streets. Um, when you're training, you're off the road and stuff like that, which is really, really good. Uh, just keep working hard. Keep working hard. Uh, hopefully... If you get a good family support like I did, my family supported me quite a lot uh, when I used to play cricket. My dad used to take time off work and stuff like that and uh, uh, helped me quite a lot as well. Uh, even if you haven't got the family support, support yourself. Obviously, if you want to play and you want to make it and stuff like that, you've got to support yourself uh, and overcome challenges. Uh, and then once you hopefully over, uh, overcome them challenges, you can uh, obviously see where you get and stuff like that. And then be a bit more realistic when you're a bit older. Uh, when you're an, an, an older teenager, uh, be, be honest to yourself. Do you think you're actually going to make it? Uh, am I not going to make it? Am I going to make it? But if you think, you know what, I am, and people have advised that you are, work hard, man, because uh, you'll get your opportunity very soon.